Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 26, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Interesting piece of malware from Brad today. Uh, Brad came across another case of the Rick exploit kits. Yes, we don't see a lot of exploit kits uh, these days, but Rick appears to be the one that's sort of still active and left over. What's kind of almost more interesting here than the exploit kit itself is the malware that was installed by this exploit kit. This malware, P2B, uh, turned out to be a little bit challenging to analyze in that it refused to run in virtual machines, so he actually had to run it on a physical machine. Of course, no, the way, if you have read uh, some of Brad's diary, the way he sort of analyzes his malware is essentially by doing runtime analysis and looking at network traffic to then collect indicators of compromise. This, of course, is uh, still pretty straightforward with a physical host, just a little bit more effort in getting it all set up and cleaned up after the fact. This malware then went ahead and started sending spam and it also connected back to a command control server on port 2287. The domain used to spread this malware is make money easy with dot me. And uh, yes, the domain was recently registered June 19th and apparently used by the Rick exploit kit as early as June 21st. And if you're running servers in Amazon's cloud, traffic monitoring has always been kind of challenging because you don't really have access to the network. So really your only option was kind of to set up sniffers within the server itself. Well, uh, that's about to change now. Today, Amazon released traffic mirroring. If you are running a virtual private cloud within AWS, you are now able to mirror traffic. So this way you can really instrument this network more like what you're used to in your own on-premise network. And as an added bonus, you're actually able to define filters. So with this, you could redirect different types of traffic to different sensors. So a bit better than what you're used to from a basic switch and mirror port. And if you are running a SOC, you probably already have heard or you are already using ELK, the Elasticsearch Logstash Kibana stack in order to store your logs and analyze them. Well, Elastic now came up with something new and that's a SIM created specifically for Elastic Search. So if you're tired of developing your own dashboards and the like, and uh, would like to use something that really nicely integrates with Elastic Search, you can take a look at this SIM application that has been released. Now you do need to run the very latest version of Elastic Search. 7.2 and you need the basic version so that's still a free offering by Elastic. And researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder came up uh, with an interesting way to spoof presidential alert messages in LTE networks. You may remember if you live in the United States that a couple months ago, a test was sent in order to test this system, similar to Amber Alerts and a couple of different alert types that are defined. These messages will pop up on all cell phones within a certain geographic range. And in particular, these presidential alert messages cannot be disabled on the phone. Now, in real life, of course, they're used very sparingly. This test message was the first nationwide alert sent of this kind. But the problem here that these researchers pointed out is that these messages are not digitally signed. So it really all depends on that the phone properly authenticates the cell tower and has an active connection with that cell tower that is actually protected. Well, there are a couple of cases where this doesn't really work well. And another complication here is that these are broadcast messages. So any kind of authentication that was done with an individual phone can not really easily be leveraged by the tower here. 
All it takes is the usual couple hundred dollars worth of software defined radio equipment. Of course, you need a little bit of better one that's able to send and receive at the appropriate frequencies here. Well, and that's it for today. Remember, there is no podcast tomorrow because I'll be in the air and always difficult to record a podcast on a plane. By the way, if you are interested in any of the classes uh, I'm teaching, I will be in London starting July 8th and then back in Boston July 29th. I'll be teaching the intrusion detection in depth class. In general, you'll find links to classes and the like in the show notes. Thanks and talk to you again on Friday. Bye.